Okay, now obviously this here is your eyepiece holder and your focuser. You have a one and a quarter inch in this case for a one and a quarter inch eyepiece. This adapter comes out in case you have a really big two inch eyepiece. Your smaller, cheaper telescopes won't be as likely to have all that, but as you get bigger, they do. This here on the left is a focusing knob, moves it up and down. Now in my case, I've got a little electric motor here. I bought an Orion focus control. If it'll focus in on it, and you just focus in, focus out, and this here changes how fast the focusing moves. When you fine tune it, if you're almost in focus, you turn it counterclockwise and it goes really slow so you can just barely bump it. If you're way out of focus, you turn it all the way clockwise and it'll go really fast and move this up and down really quick. Now my scope came with a little 9 power by 50 millimeter finder scope which I've replaced with a laser. I still have this if I want to use it. And this is just say it's just a little bitty telescope. It's only 9 power and it helps you center up objects. You do this when you're first looking for something to line you to line up a star like say if you're trying to find the bright star that you know to get yourself a starting point. You find it in this first. It's easier to find it here. And then you center it up in here. And then you look for it in here and recenter it. And you've got adjustment screws on here, which you can fine tune the up and down and left and right of this finder to get it to where when you have it dead center in this, it should be dead center in your eyepiece too. Now the reality is it gets bumped out periodically. These are you, they have really small threads. You don't get them real tight. So they will come out of adjustment when you're traveling or just whatever. They get bumped. They come out of adjustment. Now when I replaced it with this laser beam, what it amounts to is it makes it way easier for me because I don't have to try to get my head here in an awkward position. Sometimes I'll have it to the scope rotated to where it's real easy to look in the eyepiece but it's hard to look in the finder. This makes it so much easier for a big telescope. It, I think it helps any telescope, but especially the big ones like this. And that laser, I probably paid about $120 for it. Now, as long as we're looking at all these neat little set screws, this little one right here is for removing my cap so I can put in a one and a quarter inch eyepiece and then tighten in the eyepiece. These two metal screws here hold my two inch to one and a quarter inch adapter. And if you put in a two inch eyepiece or the adapter either one, you can tighten it with two screws. Help hold that more securely. This one here, there's a black plastic one. You can use this to lock your focus after you've got it focused really good. That's primarily for photography. If you're taking a bunch of pictures and you don't want to accidentally bump it. And you might also like it if you're doing something really high power. If you're looking at the planets or the moon and you've got high power and your focusing is a little touchy. You can tighten that up. Now in my case, since I have this electric focuser on here, the motor kind of locks it for me. So I don't, haven't even been messing with that, but some people do. Now down here on your counterweight shaft, there's another lever here. You can lock and unlock it to slide this counterweight bar farther in or farther out. And that's just another balancing thing. If you were to, this mount, like I say, it came with this big 10 inch, but you could put a smaller scope on it and you might not need as much weight. You might only need one weight. You might need two. You might, 
want to change the position in or out. It just helps you out another adjustment. In my case, I leave it all the way out. Now here on this little panel, you've got an LED that shows you got power. Right here is where you plug in your power adapter. This little connector here is like a little telephone jack, basically. Just like the old-fashioned telephone, and that's for the hand control. Over here it says illuminator. This is for your polar alignment scope. It's got a little red LED in there, and you can brighten or darken it for when you're trying to sight Polaris. You can adjust it to comfortable brightness so that you can set Polaris right on the circle that it has inside there. You can see here's your little thumb screw toe saver. See it'll slide right down and hit it so it doesn't fall off. Now when it comes time to take it all down, you want to do everything in reverse order. So you're going to take the telescope off first, the weights last. You always have weights on here before you put the scope on. So anytime the telescope is on here, the weights should be on here. left my cover on there to make sure the sun wasn't getting in. It's not pointed directly at it. We'll make sure. Here's a comparison between a 10 inch telescope and a 6 inch. Now when you're reading about this stuff in the magazines, it seems like they're basically, you know, they're really close, right? 10 inch, 6 inch, they look quite a bit different to me, but people don't realize it till they see them. Like I say, this weighs about 30 pounds. This maybe weighs 10 to 12 pounds, if that. There's your 10 inch diameter, which this is actually a little bigger. The 10 inch diameter is the primary mirror. 6 inch diameter is the mirror inside there. So there's not a real big difference there. But when you get it into dealing with the size and weight, it's a lot different. Uh, six inch obviously is a lot more portable. That's more of a grab and go type scope as they call it. You don't have to have a great big mount like I've got, but that mount works with this scope. If you wanted to get into photography, a little six inch imaging scope or something like that or even a four inch could be usable on this if you start getting into the little bitty four inch you might actually have to add weight to the scope or find a different counterweight because when I put that six inch on there I only use one of those 11 pound weights as opposed to three a four inch scope and 11 pound weight could actually be too much so you could you know either get a hold of a smaller weight or actually add weight to the uh, telescope. Now we'll remove the counterweights. Got my little cushion there for my knees. Remove my little safety screw. I'm keeping my hands here just in case. Just have to barely loosen this and it slides right off. That's 11 pounds of metal coming down. And it would hurt. And 
as you can see, this little thing is really handy. It makes it so much easier. As you can see, I've got it to where it's not in the threads. I hold it back a little. This thing will come back and obviously it'll unscrew. If you wanted to remove this and get a different bolt, you can get stronger ones. It's just when I tighten them up where the scope's in it or not, I just push it back. And the same thing when I'm taking it apart, because when you're taking it apart, it'll start to come right in there and you could get them both stuck in and then that's when you could strip it out. You don't want that to happen. Now down here, obviously, see this is your eyepiece holder tray. So you got for two inch eyepieces and one and a quarter. But more importantly, they call it a spreader. It keeps the tripod legs spread out for you, which for one thing, it'll keep the legs from getting kicked inwards while you're out using your scope and having a thing fall over. If you don't, if you buy a used one and you don't have one of these, you need to find one or make something. You need something to keep the legs out. Also, it can help with vibration. I've seen where people took, these are about two inches in diameter. I saw online where a guy took a piece of two inch diameter plastic PVC plumbing pipe split it in half down the center and put it in here, a little semicircle, in between this and that to kind of absorb vibration. If you did something like that, you could even put some kind of heavy duty rubber tape like weather stripping or something like that, something real heavy and put that on each leg and that would help reduce vibration if this gets bumped because if you're looking at something at high power, it would be vibrating so much more you'd see the object in there doing this. I mean it's really vibrating and if you're taking pictures that's where it's really annoying. Down under here is a little nut with a hand thumb screw where you tighten this up. This tightens up here to holds the mount down. So this is all very important. You need to have this and you need to make sure it's good and snug. Some people have even uh, designed and have for sale special ones. Some guys make another spreader that are into photography and they'll have you can buy them for two or three hundred dollars and they're down here and they spread out but you can make one. If you get online and look there's people that make them out of a piece of three-quarter inch plywood or something and they buy a longer bolt or another bolt and a little coupler and bring it up and it's just strictly to make this more sturdy and to dampen vibration. It's all for photography. I've seen where people hang weights from here like maybe a 10 pound weight and have it bolted there and that absorbs some of the vibration too. So then putting all that extra stuff on there as far as another spreader or weights, that's for photography use. That's if you're really getting critical. I mean, you can do it anyway, but you don't have to. If you're trying to do long exposure photography or really high power photography, planetary or the moon, then you might like that stuff and you might start reading about all the little tricks of the trade.